So why do you wish to join civil service? So my motivation for civil services came from my experiences in my work. Actually, my work with uh, a student-led initiative called IDI, increasing diversity by increasing access to legal education, where I could work for an impact a few times. And uh, this is why I chose civil services, because civil services gives us that opportunity to reach out to people through various means, especially policy implementation. This was my reason for it. I see from a biodata that you are associated with a, with a law firm and you are getting one lakh forty five thousand per month, which means uh, you must be doing a very good job as a young lawyer. And it also shows that you have a very bright future in law. Now, why do you want to make a change? So I've already left my uh, working job and uh, I wish to make this change because I want to use my knowledge of law and my legal aptitude in the civil services because even administration has a lot to deal with law. So I think my legal education can also be of use in this field. This is your first attempt? Yes. Oh, I, uh, I beg your pardon, sir. So this is my second attempt. Second attempt. What qualities will you bring to this job? To bring the ability to communicate, deal with situations and problem solving. That is something that I've learned during my law school. I am also a very balanced person and I have learned to appreciate adverse uh, uh, different viewpoints. So I believe I will be able to deal with situations in that manner. Yeah, quite right. But you know, in this job, you require something more than all these. These are admirable qualities, but you require like Integrity is the first way. The rule of law, you must abide by the rule of law always. Third is moral courage, that is, courage to do and say the right thing. And fourth, readiness to lead from the front and handle crisis. These are the qualities which you must always mention. The hmm. same. Uh, you know, in our relationship with China, uh, there is a phrase which is often used called the string of pearls. What do you understand by this string of pearls? So the string of pearls refers to a chain of uh, military establishments, a chain of uh, various ports which the China is either helping other countries to develop or is also uh, getting a lease hold of such as the Hamburg Buddha port. And these string of pearls are present in the Indian Ocean. So which are these? You mentioned Hamburg Buddha. What else? Um, so there's another port called Kyapo in Myanmar. Then uh, even in Maldives, uh, there was an attempt to... Uh, Maldives, there's nothing there at the moment. What else? So in Djibouti, they have... Uh, yes, they uh, got in Djibouti. Yeah. And uh, um, so even the Cocoa Islands, which are near Myanmar, even China has uh, control over those islands also. So these are a few areas uh, in the Indian Ocean which form a part of the Sri Lanka. One important uh, uh, port which you have forgotten is part of the CPEC, isn't it? I think it's right. the Gwadar port. Gwadar port. Now, China has been spending a lot of money on, uh, on the CPEC. In fact, uh, according to published records, it's about $55 billion. What is the significance of the CPEC for China? So the significance of CPEC for China is threefold. First, to ensure uh, energy security of China, because as of now, the, China, the import of oil takes a very longer route through right. the Strait of Malacca, right. and uh, that becomes a problem in case it's blocked. So this will provide a shorter route. Second, it is also important from the point of view of Xinjiang province of China, because if this uh, CPEC works, then it can bring economic development in those regions and can uh, probably help control the, uh, the adverse views which arise from that area against China. Which, which, which is the group which is causing them problem in uh, Xinjiang? Um, so they are called Uyghurs. Uyghurs, yes. Muslims. Yes. That's right. But they have taken very harsh action against them in any case. So that's not a very major issue, but the, the basic strategic advantage, as you mentioned, is that, that it gives them a direct access and the distance is, uh, is decreased tremendously. What is the length of the CPC area? 
It's about 3,000 3, kilometers. Thank you. Via the distance through the Straits of Malacca up to South China Sea and all to the eastern coast is <coughs> three times larger than that, longer. <coughs> so that is the basic issue at all. Okay. Now, you know, there is a scheme uh, of the government called Stand Up India. Are you aware of this? Yes, sir. What is the scheme? The scheme of Stand Up India um, mandates the banks to provide certain loans to uh, persons from scheduled caste, mm -hmm. scheduled tribes, and also uh, to women. So uh, the aim is to make credit available to these groups so that they can then uh, probably go for entrepreneurship right. or any set of them. How much, how much money can they get under this uh, scheme? Any idea? So I'm sorry, I'm 10 lakhs. 10 lakhs to 1 crore is the amount which can be. Okay. Now, so that's uh, uh, something on law. Does the constitution provide any provision for removal of the Supreme Court judge? So, Article 124 talks about uh, removal of the Supreme Court judges and uh, under two conditions, right? Under two conditions. What are those? Uh, where there is any. Uh, uh, Movement? Is there way? Uh, proved uh, and incapacity. incapacity, right? Now the Judges' Inquiry Act lays down the procedure. What is the procedure? So the procedure is that first the notice has to be moved by uh, 50 members of the Rajya Sabha or 100 members of the Lok Sabha right. to uh, the respective presiding officer. Mm -hmm. Then the presiding officer has uh, um, a discretion to accept or reject the notice. Once the notice is accepted, then an inquiry committee is set up, which comprises of three uh, individuals, and based on the recommendation. Who are those? Who are those? Um, so, three one. Yeah. so the three members are first a, Supre uh, a judge of the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court, second a Chief Justice of the High Court, and, and third is an eminent jurist. Right. Now uh, you follow lawn tennis, right? So there are four grand the grandstand events. Which are these? Um, so in the chronological order, yeah. they are uh, Australian Open. Paris Open, mm -hmm. Wimbledon, and the US Open. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Wait, sir. <coughs> you, you have mentioned like you know Assam Meghalaya. Uh, that is the choice, both choice. There is something like Manipur Tripura. They are called joint cadre, isn't it? What do you mean by that? Have you ever thought of? What is this under third constitutional amendment? One hundred. So the one hundred third constitutional amendment provides for ten percent reservation to uh, persons from economically backward mm -hmm. uh, sections, and an amendment has been moved to uh, Article fifteen and Article sixteen, and mm -hmm. Article fifteen six and Article sixteen six have been added to the constitution. Now it is again in the Supreme Court in the trial. Do you think it will have some legal hurdles? What kind of legal hurdles? So there is a possibility of legal hurdles on two grounds. Mm. First is the economic backwardness as a criteria. Mm. And second, uh, the 50% rule. Um, in my opinion... In the, which case does 50% capping was done? So it was done in the case of Indira Sani versus Union of India. Mm. And it was also then reiterated in the Nagar judgment. And uh, the courts had held that 50% rule is essential to maintain the basic principle of right to equality. In Nagra's case, also, they mentioned something else in addition to what was that? Um, so, the Nagra judgment had uh, talked about promotions hmm. in uh, civil services, uh, in uh, government services. And it subject had, to? Subject to four conditions. Hmm. But the conditions being that there should be a quantifiable data to show backwardness, hmm. that there should be a 50% limit or uh, uh, a cream in element as well. Mm -hmm. And third, to also uh, ensure that efficiency in administration is maintained. Is that also a provision in the constitution? Yes, sir. So it's article 335 of the constitution. Okay. Tell me, suppose you are posted as district magistrate in a northeastern state, any state, Assam, Meghalaya, what are the kinds of problems you face there as district magistrate? Take 
Tell me what are the problems in Northeast? To start with. So, of the various problems that there are in Northeast, one of the major problems is uh, uh, the level of development. Um, second is uh, the, the clashes which take place due to ethnic identities, yes. because there is a fear of loss of ethnic identities. And uh, third, also because uh, those areas surround our borders, then there are also issues of migration and uh, uh, porous borders when it comes to our uh, international and borders. And insurgency in some of these states. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, yes. you, you are posted as district magistrate, maybe in some uh, state like Assam. So, uh, what would you, what would be your priority? Or any backward district of Haryana, you want to forget about Assam, you are now in Haryana. So you tell me what you would like to do as a district magistrate, to make a mark that you have done something. So my priority will be, or I will begin with first identifying the core issues of that area, because every area has a different issue. And based on that, then I will prioritize the, uh, the actions that are... Haryana, suppose to Faridabad. Hmm. So, what do you do? So, my first action will be uh, to curb air pollution. Air pollution? So, because Faridabad... What will you do in for air, air pollution as district magistrate? So, as a district magistrate, I have... Uh, I will have the opportunity to reach out to people. And air pollution cannot be curbed merely by government measures, but also yes. requires the efforts of the people. Mm -hmm. So as a district magistrate, I can probably uh, come up with certain plans, come up with certain uh, programs where I can encourage the people of Faridabad to ensure and work towards using air pollution. Okay. Think of a better answer. This is a possible question. Uh, are Khap Panchayats legal bodies? Have panchayats, are they legal bodies? Uh, no ma'am, they are informal uh, bodies which have been set up and they often uh, act as a quasi-judicial body. So many times they uh, give their day tax. So why do people work on that? Like you know, on a tenants. How do people act on those day tax then? Um, probably because the Khap Panchayat enjoys uh, a social or a moral uh, authority over the people in those areas. Also probably because people also agree with their decisions to some extent and which is why they uh, go and abide by so such illegal decisions and uh, that is probably the reason. Are the cops also known for some good work in Haryana? Yes ma'am. Mention some um, areas where they work and done good? Yes ma'am. Ma'am the Pura Khaap has uh, 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 ensured that there should be dowry of only rupees one. Mm -hmm. There are certain other decisions which have been taken such as the marriage procession should not include more than 21 people so that there is less burden on the girl child. Then even the Beti Bacha, Beti Padao uh, scheme has been uh, propagated and has been uh, brought to the fore by the Khap and Child. What is this scheme you are talking about, Beti Bacha or Beti Padao? Uh, Ma'am, the scheme has been launched uh, uh, by the government of India. Uh, just tell me what it means, uh, Beti Bacha or Beti Padao. Ma'am, there are three components of the scheme. First is to eliminate gender-based uh, um, sex elimination. So do we have an act for it? Yes ma'am. The act is called prenatal natal uh, PCP. So what is being done? Um, what is being done in Haryana? this act, yes. In this act, under this act. Um, um, under this act first, um, uh, sex selection has been uh, banned. Uh, that the devices which can detect the sex and the uh, determination cannot uh, be placed in uh, certain areas. Second, even the doctors should not disclose the sex of the unborn child. And third, under this act, the governments have undertaken a lot of raids, especially inter-district and inter-state raids, and uh, have also banned the selling of empty tickets, which okay. are used. So, under the Parhau, Beti Parhau, what is being done in Haryana? Now, under the Beti Parhau, uh, uh, certain measures are being taken to encourage uh, the, uh, the parents to send their girl child to uh, the school and certain these measures are uh, Sukanya so Samriddhi uh, uh, program, then also Akhidati Namari Deity program, in which they encourage uh, the parents to ensure that the money that they deposit are used for the education of the girl and that they're not married off at a very early age. Okay, we were talking about air pollution. Now, Haryana has just denotified parts of the anomalies. Will this lead to more air pollution? Will cut down the forests? 
Now there are genuine concerns mm -hmm. because uh, after an amendment has been made to the Punjab Land Preservation Act, um, certain areas of uh, the Hadamis can be cut down. And as we know, uh, plants or trees form a really important part of curbing air pollution. So has the NGT given any directions regarding air pollution in Delhi and the national capital area? Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, the NGT had uh, recently uh, banned the use of uh, coke, or, uh, coke and uh, furnace oil, which has been used in large numbers and is causing uh, air pollution. The NGT had also given orders to not fell trees in Aragonese some time back. And uh, the program, uh, the GDRP program, which the Greater Response Action, it also, was also formed as a result of the actions of the NGT. What about the ban of entry of diesel vehicles more than a certain years old into Delhi or other diesel trucks coming to Delhi? Yes, ma'am, that was also taken by NGT. Right. Now, what's the status of the sacred Germina leaf canal? Well, the current state is it's that 85% of it has been built. Mm -hmm. The works have been completed in Haryana. However, uh, the certain other works are pending in Punjab. And the Punjab is uh, refusing to provide water. They have also returned the land taken from farmers back to farmers. Yes, ma'am. They have even done that. And uh, their reasons are first that they do not have sufficient water, they say. And second, that uh, the flow of water has also changed from what was earlier anticipated under uh, the. So, what can we do to look into this problem of scarcity of water in the Um, I think a multi-dimensional uh, uh, approach is required. Mm -hmm. right? The very first is the 85% of the groundwater in Haryana is being used for agriculture. Mm -hmm. So certain steps can be taken such as using water efficient technology such as drip and sprinklers. Second, uh, there should be a change in the cropping pattern. Okay. And uh, these can be... What about water harvesting? Yes ma'am. Even mm -hmm. in little ponds? Definitely ma'am. And even uh, for, the, for the fact uh, a district in uh, uh, a place in Nimad has actually built a lot of plants and has actually turned a water deficient area into an area which can provide water for survival. So such steps should definitely be taken. Are there provisions in law for the protection of women, safety of women? Just mention some of these. Now the very first uh, is under the IPC where uh, certain new crimes have been added such as voyeurism, stalking and sexual harassment, then uh, there are uh, provisions oh, against rape, yeah. and uh, this is under the IPC. Then we have certain other provisions like the Sexual Harassment Act and uh, at the workplace, at the workplace. Mm -hmm. and uh, this is what I think. Interesting. Why did I find that we won a gold medal in competition law? Don't we need a competition law? So we need a competition law to ensure that uh, there is a level playing field, that uh, no person is able to exploit his or her uh, uh, or their uh, dominant position in the market, and that even new players are allowed to enter and... Do you have a competition law in, this, in India? Yes, sir. When was the law elected? Sir, it was enacted in 2002. And what are the provisions? Um, so the provisions are that it deals with three types of anti-competition measures such as anti-competitive agreements, abuse of dominant position, and combinations. And provisions have been provided to ensure none of these leads to adverse impacts on the competition. Any important judgment given by this, under this law in India? Sir, so, um, Some penalty has also been imposed on some MNCs. Judgment, but a recent judgment was given where the combination of Reliance and uh, the Reliance Geo and uh, Vodafone and uh, uh, IDEA was there held to be. That's fine. Uh, International Court of Justice, what is its jurisdiction? So the jurisdiction is based on certain provisions. First, that uh, the, the members of the United Nations can agree to bring a dispute before. Uh, International Court of Justice under Article 36 of the ICJ. Second, um, if there is any agreement or any treaty which provides for compulsory jurisdiction, then also uh, it can be provided for instance. What happened to Kurdos and the other states? 
So uh, the final hearings recently took place, and India has made a three-fold argument. First, that India has jurisdiction. Second, the, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, the ICJ has jurisdiction. Second, that Pakistan is under an egregious uh, breach of Article 36.1 of the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations. And third, that certain relief must be granted, and that relief should even extend to releasing the Right. Economic crimes. That is how they increase, right? And we have set laws also to address this problem. Can you cite some law? What are the laws and what are the institutions? So there are laws such as the Benami uh, Transactions Act, then even the Fugitives Economic Offenders Act, right. then um, even the even though that is not for an offense, even the IBC for that matter also talks about uh, where there are debt, uh, there are debt obligations which are uh, not undertaken, and then certain measures are taken. So these are certain laws which deal with economic the institutions. So institutions such as the enforcement directorate, even uh, the CBI is also in certain cases uh, dealt with economic offenses, and. Uh, what are the sources of administrative law? So the sources of administrative law are uh, basically the delegated legislation where uh, uh, certain rules and uh, bylaws are made by the, uh, the executive center and of course the overall political law. Law Commission of India, what is its role? So Law Commission of India's role is to, it's the prime a legal advisory body of the uh, government where they, they research on certain pertinent legal issues and provide certain advices to the government. For instance, uh, uh, the recent advice on sedition or uh, even the fall as a death penalty and certain other such issues. Last question. Labor reforms, that's an area on which not much progress is there. What is inhibiting the growth of the Any legislation on labor laws? So labor laws is a very complex item. There are multitudes of laws which are in place. And uh, recently the government is trying to uh, combine those laws into four courts. However, uh, there are certain problems such as uh, uh, objections by the trade unions and labor unions who are not okay with uh, the seemingly dilution of the labor laws. But some of the state governments have made such changes in the labor laws. Can you Set some example on that, or which are the states that have carried out some amendments? I'm sorry, I might have been agreed upon it. Okay, fine. Thank you. Right. Now there is, seems to be a competition among the states to provide more and more reservation. Ujjars mm -hmm. have been provided now from 1% to 5%. But Maharashtra has given, I don't know, 12 percent or something to Marathas. Now, where will all this end? Eventually it will go to the Supreme Court. Always. What do you think will be the main issues before the Supreme Court? Identify two, three issues which the Supreme Court will deal with. So the very first issue will be uh, the breach of the Cuban Bill has been uh, set up by the Supreme Court. The second will be whether these sections of the population can actually qualify for reservation under Article 15 and Article 16, which restricts it to socially and educationally backward uh, groups. And uh, so third, probably uh, the point of efficiency of the uh, administration, which is provided under Article 335. These, I believe, will be the major issues before the Supreme Court. And the issue will be whether the constitutional amendment under 3 is a valid amendment or not. That itself will be yes. a matter. Now, after the Nirbhaya incident, a lot of noise was made of tightening the laws and providing help to the people. What is your information? Do the women have the women got a better deal now, or as far as law enforcement is concerned, or not? Like certain uh, positive steps have been taken. 
and uh, for, uh, for instance, uh, many changes have been made to the IPC and the CRPC to strengthen the laws that exist. And now it's up to the implementation, how these implementations are brought in. That's where I'm asking you, law enforcement, how is the quality of law? Very good, very good. You read the NCRB reports, you'll find, and it's not quite reading because you are a student. Now, you know, the state of Haryana presents some very stark paradoxes. Do you see any paradox? So, one major paradox is that Haryana excels in economic parameters, but uh, has been lagging behind in social parameters, especially the sex ratio. And patriarchy, you know, honor killing, these kind of things, it's still very half and child predominance. So, there is no liberalization despite the economic growth. Anything else you can find? Any other paradox? Even a suppressed person, girls are doing extremely well. What do you think that's a strange thing? There's another paradox which I find. Or thus one would say that in its reckless search for economic growth, it has forgotten the basic principle of sustainable development. Yes. Yes. So the forest cover has come down to three point five. DLPA, DLPA is being amended. 30,000 hectares are being released from Arabic. Arabic are being destroyed. That is a very serious paradox. Now, what is net neutrality? So, net neutrality is a principle which dictates the internet service providers to not discriminate between the content that is put up on the internet. To ensure that uh, there is an equitable access to all the content which exists. Should sure, the internet be regulated? So definitely, uh, internet should be regulated to the extent that if the use of internet is leading to issues such as uh, internal security challenges, then there is a need to regulate the internet. What were the grounds on which 66A was held and constituted? So if I remember correctly, then 66A was rendered unconstitutional for being arbitrary and uh, for uh, uh, for providing excess powers to the uh, uh, to the police without uh, sufficient safeguards. And its wording was extremely vague, grossly offensive, menacing, menacing. Now anything can be menacing. You know, that, so it would be interpreted in a very strange way. One more question. COP 21, Paris Conference. Are its decisions legally binding? So, I believe not. Because uh, uh, a thing becomes legally binding upon another country only when it forms a part of the convention that exists. Was any climate agreement, global agreement, ever? Legally binding? So the Kyoto Protocol? Yes, yes. But it has been diluted. Yes. Sir. Major parties are running away from it like America. What happened in Hanoi? What was the result of the Hanoi summit? Sir, I beg your pardon. Never mind. It has failed. Both sides put a very very, very strong demands. You know Hanoi, what happened? Trump and... Uh, oh, yes, sir. So, uh, I have heard that uh, Donald Trump walked out of the negotiations and uh, no agreement has been reached towards the utilization of the... It has failed because both sides are adamant on certain positions. Yes, sir. We close the interview. I'll give you a little feedback. First is you've done very well, you're very well informed and uh, You have been able to answer most of the questions nicely, including like straight.
Jango Palace, etc. Just be careful about areas. You said Coco Island. Just check up on Coco Island. Whether China is really controlling it. I, my information is China is controlling nothing in uh, Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Let's check up on this. <coughs> so now, most of the questioning will be based on your biodata. Haryana is one on which you have to prepare. Though you are pretty well prepared, but just keep in mind that since law is your subject, main subject, they are going to ask you a lot of questions. I have not asked you questions on constitutional principles, which are important, like basic structure, rigidity in the constitution, what are the sources of rigidity, unitary features, you know those. Article 21, due, due process of law. Then the question can be that most states are hoping that these uh, uh, reservation uh, policies they be placed in nice schedule. And so it will be immune from judicial review. But then there is a uh, IR code of case. You know, we say basic structure on the, if basic structure is disturbed, the Supreme Court can still look into it. Yes. So those are the areas where you have information absolutely up to date, right? Then criminals in politics, Lily Thomas, and last year, in 2018, Supreme Court gave some very important directions, yes, including establishment of 12 special courts. So, Iskiu Parapardi and Current Affairs, Kidakamatacha, extracurricular activities, tennis, etc. Indian class in high school, you are a very pleasant personality. You are fully equipped to handle this interview nicely. So keep up your good studies. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Um, so just one question. Mm -hmm. uh, do I come across as someone who speaks really fast? Because mm -hmm. I've been told that. that, 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 that. You are doing very good. Thank you so much, sir. This also someone told you? Yes, sir. I can <laughs> ask. He's giving me light minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. And press the bell icon to never miss an update.